In this video of the Singer Heavy Duty 4423 sewing machine, we're going to show you how to thread the machine, wind the bobbin, and get you sewing right away. With these simple steps, I'm going to guarantee that you're going to have success when you sit down to sew. But there are a few things that can definitely make a difference on whether you are successful or not. So starting off with thread, when you choose good quality thread, your sewing machine will thank you. When you look at the thread, if you find that it's very bumpy, there's thick and thin threads, that's cheap thread, you got it in a variety pack that was less than $5, that is not good thread. You need to feed your sewing machine good, healthy thread, otherwise, well, you're not gonna get the results that you're looking for. So in my experience, as soon as I change to a good quality thread, most machines work just fine. So on this thread, you notice that there are some X's in how it was wound on the spool. That does mean that the thread will come off the end of it best. So I'm gonna put it on the horizontal spool pin. There are threads that have what I call stack thread where the thread just lays right next to each other. And those threads will put on the vertical spool pin. But for right now, since I don't have that thread, I am gonna take that vertical spool pin off. Now another use of that uh, spool pin is if you were putting to use a double needle or a twin needle, that's where that second spool could actually go on to this machine. So we'll set that off to the side. Next, because it's laying down, it's going to have the tendency to slide off. And that's where the spool caps are going to come in. But when we put the spool cap on, if I was to leave it right about there, what's going to happen is somewhere along our sewing process, the thread is going to drop in between there and get tight and get twisted around. That usually leads to a broken needle and it just breaks because it gets pulled and snapped and then you're like what happened well it's just because it got twisted so the key is is not to leave a gap when you put the spool cap on the thread for winding a bobbin so I'm gonna go ahead and take out one of my empty bobbins and bobbins are something that you cannot mix and match unless they're identical from a previous machine so my suggestion to you is just go ahead and order yourself more bobbins or visit your local sewing machine store they will know what kind of bobbin this machine takes this is a standard class 15 plastic bobbin not to be mixed up with a class 15 metal bobbin that's a different well they're different weights metal and plastic there's nothing different about it but this machine is set for the tension for only the lightweightness of a plastic bobbin so when we go to wind a bobbin you're going to follow the steps here i'm going to go ahead and always use step one because that's going to keep the thread coming directly off the spool without any resistance but to wind a bobbin we're going to go ahead and follow the little picture see that kind of crisscross dotted line that does mean that it needs to go underneath and around towards the back and then over here towards the bobbin winder but with this little guy here, there is what's called a pretensioner. Make sure your thread gets firmly connected underneath that little button. Um, if the thread just gently goes around here and you wind your bobbin and you get a big fluffy mess, it's, well, number one, it doesn't work well in here. You want a nice, tightly wound bobbin for sewing. And this little pretensioner is what does it. That's why they have you wrap it back around itself. All right, did you know that? There's gonna be lots and lots of tips throughout all these videos that are gonna make a big difference in how you are successful with your machine. So next I'm gonna take this thread and from the inside out, I'm coming up through, so from the middle and out the top, I'm threading the hole of the bobbin. So when I place the bobbin on here, I have something to hold on to, so I can hold it straight up from here. You notice the little picture over here recommends the same thing. As soon as you push the bobbin towards this little white stopper and start stepping on the foot control, you're going to notice it will wind. I recommend that you hold on to this thread and it will actually break off, but for any reason it doesn't, you could stop and then take your scissors and make sure you clip really close to that hole that that thread came up in. You don't want to leave ever a little tail sticking up because when you put it down in the bobbin area, that's going to definitely not be correct. So see how the thread is coming perfectly off the spool? and it's feeling nice and firm. So I can feel with my fingernail that I have a nice tight wind. 
You're going to notice as you get a little bit closer to the fullness that the bobbin kind of stops spinning all the way. And that's where it's set to, uh, well, make sure it doesn't overfill. For any reason, your bobbin is not filling all the way out to the edge that you, to your liking. Maybe it's a portion of it. There's a screw right here. This adjusts how that um, stopper uh, pushes up against the bobbin. So it can be adjusted slightly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that apart. And with the way the bobbin winds, okay, so if you take this right off the top, but don't flip it at all, when you place it down in the bobbin area, it will match the picture right here. So there is a proper way a bobbin needs to be inserted into the drop-in bobbin area and gone through the tension. And that picture will remind you, but if you just go like this, pull it straight up, and then come right on down and drop it into your bobbin area. It will be the correct way every single time. Now we'll do a close up of how to put the bobbin in, kind of, uh, so find our inserting the bobbin video. But your uh, there's a little groove at the bottom, kind of six o'clock area. Notice I'm gonna put my finger on the bobbin and pull so it clicks into the little groove that it's showing on the bobbin picture. So there's kind of like for, at six o'clock and then out at about 7.30, you know, it kind of comes out about there. Leave this off because as soon as we put our um, thread through the machine, then we're gonna bring the bobbin thread up. So that's the last thing that goes on when we're done. So coming back up to the top, the pre-tensioner is only for winding bobbins. So undo it from there. And now we're gonna go ahead and work with the numbered system of threading the machine. One, two. Now at this point, I'm gonna switch here. I'm gonna start to hold the top thread while I come down where three is. Inside this area where the three is noted is the tension discs. If your presser foot is up, so right now make sure your presser foot is up, those tension discs open. When I place my thread firmly, and as lately as I've been saying, with threading with purpose, that thread goes all the way down where it needs to go. That's gonna come back and haunt you if you don't thread with a little bit of resistance. And that's why I hold those uh, thread at the top. I'm coming up at four. We're going in on the right side, down on the left of the take-up lever, that's his name, and the little number five is showing us just that. Now, before I get any further, there is tape that is holding our needle threader from its travels, because this is brand new. That's good, we'll get that taken off. And then we have a guide that is open right here on the um, right side, and then there's one more guide at the top of the needle. So there's guide and then guide. And then I'm gonna show you, we'll master the needle threader together, but it does just magically pull the thread through the needle, which is awesome. And the last thing you need to do is bring your bobbin thread up to the top so we can start to sew. Hold the thread with your left hand and turning your hand wheel towards you, always towards you, we're taking one full stitch. One full stitch means you bring the take-up lever to the highest position. And if you pull up on the thread you're holding over here, there is now a loop of thread. That loop of thread is the bobbin thread. Pull it on up. Place both threads down the middle of the foot, and now you're ready to put the bobbin door in place. Now, you'll notice as I do our sewing for different stitches and things that I'm always gonna be sewing on two layers of fabric. So take some fabric, fold it in half, and then slide it underneath the presser foot, lower the presser foot down, and we're just on a basic straight stitch. You don't have to hold the threads when you start to sew. I'll show you the tricks for that, and that way you can see how cool everything is looking. All right, so before I take this out, I'm gonna turn the hand wheel, bring the take-up lever to the highest position, lift the presser foot up in the back, and there is a cutter on the side of the machine that you can go from front to back or back to front. And we have our very first sewing seam, and it is perfect. So we're gonna go in and identify a little bit closer up the needle threader and putting the bobbin in, and continue on with all the awesome stitches that are built into this machine.